Okay, so today I want to cover the aluminum rockers that are available for the J-Series um, and compare them to the factory standard uh, steel ones that come on the, on the motor. In this engine in Pacific, we're talking about the J32A2. Um, in this case, you'll see here the standard uh, steel rockers and you'll see the aluminum counterpart. So these are brand new. These I bought from Honda, and these I actually just took out of an engine I have here. Um, as you can see, the steel, they're pretty much a lot thinner right at the top because steel obviously is a lot stronger than aluminum. However, for them to make a rocker that can sustain or take the, the abuse, they add quite a bit of body up here. So there's going to be a, a weight savings, just not sure exactly how much weight savings is going to come because there's quite a lot more material on this rocker in comparison to the steel ones. So the first thing I want to do here is to put them on the scale, check the weight, show you how much they weigh, and then I'll show you how we um, install them in the head. Today we're just going to be covering the exhaust side. Uh, next video we'll, we'll do the intake side. The intake is a little more complicated because the aluminum rockers don't support VTEC. And as you know, the J-Series engines have VTEC on the intake side only. So in that video, we'll cover how you go about um, getting that to work. Uh, on the exhaust side, that's not an issue. So we'll just begin Okay, now. so I got the, the steel rockers here. These would come standard on the J32 A2 engine. These are the aluminum rockers here. Uh, so I would say this is the right side, and this is the right side in aluminum. This is the left side, this is the left side in aluminum. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put them on the scale here, see uh, how much of a weight savings we have. So we'll start with the steel one. And we got 127 grams. So we'll write that as 127. So the one that we're gonna replace it with the aluminum one, let's see, 90 grams. So that's, uh, Actually, quite a good drop in there. 90 grams. Now we go to the other side. 125 grams. And the aluminum one for that side. 90 grams. So as you can see, the aluminum rockers are quite a good weight savings in comparison to the standard steel ones. Okay, so I'm here with the J32A2 cylinder head. Uh, this is a spare head that I had here. It's got a bent valve in it, but it has served a purpose for what we're doing here. So before I begin, I guess, this is obviously the exhaust side of the engine. This is the intake side. So as you'll notice right away, the exhaust side only has two rocker arms, whereas the intake side you have the two, and then you have the middle one, which is your VTEC uh, lobe. So you have three, you know, three cylinders. You have your three, your three, and your three. So on the camshaft, if you were looking at the camshaft, the two outer lobes, there's five lobes per cylinder. The two outer lobes are for your exhaust, and your and the three uh, middle ones are for your intake. So with that, let me take off the exhaust rail so we can look into installing those um, aluminum rockers. So we're going to lift this up a little bit. Now you see these are spring loaded. They kind of came out as you come in. You can just kind of squeeze them and get it up. So this part's pretty easy. As you can see, they're just pretty much sliding all over the place. So for now, we're, I only have uh, two rockers, so we're only going to take off one cylinder for now. Let's rest that back there. We're gonna be reusing the spring. And what we're gonna to need to do is take off our valve adjustment screws and put onto the aluminum ones because that does not come with them. So let me rest this aside. And let's just reposition this real quick here. Easiest way is you're gonna squeeze it and you're gonna, as you squeeze it, you put it down into the cylinder head casing and that way you'll know exactly where you're at. 
Okay. So, with the aluminum rocker, you got to know which one is your left, or I guess your right, and they'll go like this. So essentially when you're putting them in, let's just lift this out. Matter of fact, I'm going to take all these off for simplicity's sake. So let's just slide all this off. This is your rail. And there's a little dowel. There's two dowel holes on here. That helps you know exactly where it goes. So again, I'm going to slide this on first. Get that out of the dowel. And you can see there's an oil passage hole here as well. That's going to help lubricate inside of the rocker. There, we got our spring. And then we have the next rocker. Same way, you're going to have to squeeze that. Before I do that, I'm going to want to put my valve adjustment screw in there. Technically do this off to the side, but... Now I recommend screwing this all the way in, as far up as you can go. It's just going to make the install a little easier, as you're going to have to adjust the valves anyways after you do this. So just go all the way up, give yourself a little more room. Now these are actually, as you can see, they're flat. They're like a tappet bottom. Those are what's actually going to be touching on the valve. So in this case, I'm going to line this up. And that goes there. Squeeze this together. It's going to need a little... And that's how you get the aluminum rockers in. I didn't put the steel ones on, but if you want to see the comparison again, these are the steel ones versus the aluminum ones. We already obviously checked the weight difference. So for the exhaust side, it's a very simple install as you can see. The intake side is a little more complicated. We got the lost motion assembly in the center, which is hidden under these um, center rockers. We'll cover that in another video. Um, trying to think of anything else I wanted to share with you right now. Oh, one thing a lot of people ask is about the pickups on the cam gear. So, this is the stock cam gear, and you can see in the back we have these pickups. The engine that's how the, uh, the stock ECU calculates the engine timing. So, on this side, we have a cam plate where we got the cam position sensor. which you can see right here. So as this cam spins, this is what's actually figuring out where the engine is. Pretty much that's what looks for that piece of metal. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. I don't think there's much beyond that. Uh, one other thing I wanted to cover and show you, which I'm gonna have to change the camera angle here to do so. I'm gonna pull this rocker out a little tight. Okay. I need to take off the intake side for this. Now this side is not spring loaded, so these will fall out very easy. As you can see, they're already sliding around very loose. And here, there's a little piston in here 
that you do not want to lose. You don't want to lose those. So be very careful when you take these out, not to turn it sideways or anything like that. I'm gonna rest this aside for now. And we're gonna take the cam gear, stick it on. I guess it doesn't really matter. As you can see, the, the camshaft. Now when it comes to doing cams, a lot of people don't realize that the lobes, this cam on this engine has to slide out. Let me, I need to get a hammer. Right, let me pause the video. I'm gonna go get a hammer. I'll be right back. Okay. So, I got you at a close-up look at a camshaft here. I just wanted to cover one of the limiting factors on these cylinder heads as far as um, pretty much increasing the lift on the cams. Honda really didn't give us a lot of room to work with. As you know, these cams have to slide into the head. So, if we look... Let me get this. Let's look right here. You see how close and tight this is already? There's really no room. I mean, and this is a stock camshaft in here. I mean, and it if you don't hold the cam in the right way, it already touches the casing, as you can see. So, I mean, just not a lot of room to increase lift and or to increase the camshaft size overall. Very tight. You have to actually wiggle it up and down just to get it in because the, the lobes already hit the case and unless you wiggle it. All right, so I hope you enjoyed today's video on the aluminum rocker arms now available for the J-Series. Um, this is, like I said, this is the original Honda part. Uh, we sell them on our website or you can buy them from the dealer. Um, I don't know what vehicle they come off of, however, we do have the part number. So um, if you think you can get some gains by going with lighter rockers on your car, uh, hopefully this video helped you understand a little bit more how you can tackle that project and get them installed in your vehicle. Um, I'll try to get another video here shortly with some more tech information, uh, cover some more stuff on the cylinder head, and then move on to some other parts of the J-Series engine. And just try to make everything a little more understandable for everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe. And um, see you guys again soon.